God, we just thank you for being here with us on tonight, Lord God. I just, I thank you, Lord God, just for perseverance, God, able to press through, Lord God. And we are here, uh, we press through, Lord God, because we want to hear your voice on tonight. And we just desire, Lord God, your presence here with us on tonight. God, you are a great God. You're great and you're greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We thank you what you are doing here in our lives at Temple Worship Center, Lord God. We thank you. Lord God, that you are making our crooked ways straight, Lord God. You're allowing us to realign according to your manufactured specification for the kingdom citizen. And that's, Lord God, that we walk in righteousness, Lord God. And, and that's, Lord God, that we just walk in godliness and, and walk in faith and walk in love and walk in patience and walk in gentleness. Lord God, we, we want to be better Christians this year. We want to be more like Christ, for we know that you have began a good work in us and you're going to complete it but lord there's some things that you told us to do you told us to flee uh temptation lord god you you told us to some things that we should we should release from our lives and people places and things lord god you told us we need to follow after righteousness which is jesus christ he's the righteous one he knew no sin but he became sin that we may be declared the righteousness of god in him and we're so thankful for a right standing in God because of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are our high priest. And you're not a high priest that can't be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but you were tempted in every area, but yet you were without sin. That's because, God, you were able to know where you came from, God. You, you, you came from the, to, from heaven, Lord God, and you came to earth, you descended, and then you ascended, and we thank you that you did come down. Had you not come down and become that lamb that was slain before the foundation of this earth, then, Lord, we wouldn't have any way out. We wouldn't have any way out of the jam, Lord God, that, that Adam put us in, and, and by our own admission to sin, and, and to live that life and chase after our own ambitions and our own goals. God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that covers all of our sins, our past, our present, and our future, Lord God. We thank you for the atonement that makes us one with you, God, through Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, Lord God. We thank you for justification, just as if we'd never sinned, Lord God. We thank you that you have washed our sins away. Even though our sins be as scarlet, you have washed them whiter than snow. So, God, we just thank you, Lord God. I thank you for this being a year, Lord God, of increase in spiritual knowledge and wisdom. God, I thank you, Lord God, in intimacy and relationship with you, Lord God. I thank you this would it be a year of intimacy, Lord God, where we will, we, will, we will close the door, Lord God, and we will close the blinds and we will lock ourselves into your presence, Lord God. We'll be like David, Lord God. And, uh, God, you were just asking the one thing that he desired, and, and that's one thing that he hoped for, and that was to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. And behold, the beauty of his temple. David wanted to go into the temple, Lord God, and God, so do we. So, God, we just pray for every Christian, everyone watching us on tonight, Lord God that you just be God, Lord God, do what you can do. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen, amen. Come on, give God a praise, everybody. Give God a praise, everybody. Give God a praise. Come on, everybody. God is a great God and he's great to be praised. Come on, y'all, we can praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Praise God. What can wash our sins whiter than snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, amen. How many thank God for his blood on today? Amen. We should, Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye land and serve the lord with gladness and come before his singing uh presence with singing know ye that the lord he is god it is he that has made us and not we ourselves hallelujah how many thank god for jesus on today how many thank god how many really really truly thank god for his spirit on today i, I thank god for the direction of the ministry i thank god for the direction i thank god for um uh, just the spirit of connectivity i thank god that even though members aren't here in person. I thank God that there's people that are praying for our ministry and people that are connected, Lord God, here at Temple Worship Center. And I pray for them at home, all those that couldn't came or come out tonight. God bless you. Uh, I love you. Praise God. We miss you on tonight. Amen. And, and, and we're going to get into the word of God. But I want Brother Shea to just come and exhort the Lord and just pray and take us further, praise God, in, in, in the service before I, I teach on tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, O oh Father God. Glory, O oh Father God, to your name, O oh Father God. For you are worthy, O oh Father God. You're worthy of a praise, O oh Father God. We just thank you on this day, O oh Father God. We come before you right now, O oh Father God, with humble hearts, O oh Father God. We ask, O oh Father God, that you search us, O oh Father God. We give you permission, O oh Father God. We give you admission, O oh Father God, you, to search us, O oh Father God. Thank you, Our soul, O oh Father God, body, O oh Father God, spirit, O oh Father God. Thank you, Lord. We desire, O oh Father God, that you remove you, anything, O oh Father God, in your son's name that should not be, O oh Father God. Thank you, Father. Snatch it out of us right now, O oh Father God. Yes. Anything that will hinder your word, O oh Father God, Hallelujah. from being... Planted, oh Father God, on good and fertile ground, oh Father God. We ask, oh Father God, that you remove it, oh Father God. Yes, Lord. We lift you up right now, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. For you are high, oh Father God, and lifted yes, up, yes, oh Father yes, God. You yes. exalted, oh Father God, your name over everything, oh Father God. We know, oh Father God, that everything, oh Father God, will pass away here. That's temporal, oh Father God. But your word, oh Father God, it shall remain, oh Father God. Yes, we thank you, Father God, for you are that lamb, oh Father God, that's spoken about in Revelations, oh Father God. Also, oh Father God, in Genesis, oh Father God, that lamb that was slain before the foundations of thank the earth, you, oh Father thank God. You, Lord. And we just thank you, Father thank God, you, for Lord. drinking thank up that you. cup, oh Father God. You, Nevertheless, not your will, oh Father yes, God, God, but thy will be done, oh Father God. Thank you, O oh Lord. Let your will be done in us, O oh Father God. We desire, O oh Father God, more of you, O oh Father God. Thank you, Father. We desire not just a glimpse of you, Father God, Thank but we you, desire Jesus. all of you, O oh Father all God. You, God. We desire, O oh Father God, more of you, O oh Father Thank God. You, Father. Stir yourself up in us, O oh Father God, Thank that you, we Father. may be poured out, O oh Father God, on yes, the people, O oh Father God. Yes, God. Every gift, O oh Father God. Yes, God. Every every ministry, O oh Father God. Hallelujah. Every office, O oh Father God, of the saints, O oh Father God. Hallelujah. Pour it out on us right now, O oh Father God. Hallelujah. We pray, O oh Father God, for Hallelujah. the city right now, O oh Father God. Yes, God. We pray for the youth right now, oh Father God, yes, God. for their own demon time, oh Father God. Mm. But we know that you are a righteous God. Yes, you are a righteous yes, judge, God. oh Father God. Yes, God. We ask, oh Father God, that you give us the power, oh Father God, to break, oh Father God, every curse, oh Father God, you, every Jesus. hex, oh Father God, Thank every you, vex, oh Father God, Thank you, oppression, oh Father God, Hallelujah. depression, oh Father God, Hallelujah. anything, oh Father God, Hallelujah. that has been spoken, oh Father God, Hallelujah. over the youth, oh Father God, Thank you, that is not of you, oh Father God. We curse Amen. it and we cancel it. Pray right now in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Bless Father you. God move on us right now oh Father God you, Jesus. let the fresh oil oh Father God even be pouring down oh Father God over the angel of the house oh Father God Thank you, Jesus. let them cry loud oh Father God and spare not oh Father God Thank you, Jesus. let them not look like look at the men in their faces oh Father God but let them just exalt oh Father God mm. your mighty word oh Father God yes, above God. everything oh Father God mm. We thank you, Father God. Mm. Your majesty, oh Father God, is everlasting, oh Father God. Your kingdom is everlasting, oh Father God. Yes. You are a great and eternal God, oh Father God. Yes, God. You are all consuming fire. You are yes, a jealous yes. God. Yes, God. Thank you, oh Father God, for you said, Be holy as you are holy, oh Father Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. So we just thank you, Father God, Hallelujah. for everything that you have given us, oh Father God. We thank you for the power. We thank you for the glory, oh thank Father you, God. Jesus. Continue you, to conform us, oh Father God. We desire to look more like you, oh Oh, Father God, let your sanctification, oh Father God, yes, be worked God. out in us, oh yes, Father God. God. Yes, God. Work those things out of us, oh Father God, that yes, should not God. be, oh Father God. Hallelujah. Keep us on the wheel, Hallelujah. oh Father God, until we look Bless like you, oh God. Father God. Don't God. take us off, oh Father God, God, the wheel, oh Father God, God. God, until we are conformed, oh Father God, into your, your image, God. oh Father yes, God. Yes, Help us, oh Father yes, God, yes, for we know not even what to pray, oh Father God. Save the Holy Spirit, oh Father God. We thank you for the comforter, oh Father God. We thank you for sending us a comforter, Lord. For you said that it is expedient, oh Father God, that you must go. Because if not, oh Father God, the comforter cannot come and reside and live in us, oh Father God. I thank you for the pair clicked it, oh Father God. I thank you for the breath, oh Father God. I thank you for the ruach, oh Father God. I just thank you, oh Father God, for being you, oh Lord. And we just lift you up, oh Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, oh Father God. Let the word go forth, oh Father God, like a hammer, oh Father God. And break, oh Father God, in pieces, oh Father God, the kingdom Thank of you, darkness, Lord. oh Father God. Hallelujah. And we just declared and decreed, oh Father Hallelujah. God, not in our authority, oh Father God, but in the authority of Jesus Christ, oh Hallelujah. Father God. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Come on. We thank God. Praise God for that prayer. Brother Shay, come on, just come on, keep praising him. Come on, keep thanking the Lord. Amen. God is great. Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. I, I'm just so excited, man. I, I, I was I was opening the door. I was leaving the gym after training some people, and I was opening the door, 
just coming in here today, man, just to get ready for Bible study. And I was so thankful that God has allowed us to turn the key to open these doors. Hey, I was just thankful for having the key to open a door to something that, that God has started and the work that he has began in our lives through the ministry here at Temple Worship Center, through the Temple Total Fitness, people are getting saved, people being filled with the Holy Ghost and signs and wonders going forth. Praise God in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Christ, the coming King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And he said his name will be wonderful and mighty counselor and the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. We thank God for the Prince of Peace. I thank God for peace in my life. Anybody just thank God for peace? Remember this time last year, you didn't have no peace. Probably this, this time last year, you probably didn't have no peace. Praise God. Somebody just felt that right. Somebody heard that right there. This time last week, last year, you was out of your mind. This, year, this time last year, you didn't know how this thing was going to turn out. But God, but God, his word is true. And he has began a good work in you. <laughs> Hey, those unanswered prayers, you, you think they unanswered prayers, God, but, but it ain't over yet. It's not over till God says it's over. It, it's not over till you hear it from the throne. God is yet still speaking, everybody, and he's speaking through his word. He's allowing us to know that he said it was going to be times like this that we're dealing with. You may be seated. He, he says it because of iniquity shall abound. He said the love of many going to wax cold. So why are we worried of, that it's so much cold love out here? If we are Christians and we are following Christ and we sheep and we hear his voice and the stranger we won't follow, why when what he said to us is resonates and come back to our mind or heart, why is it hard for us to take it? Because we haven't allowed it to settle in our heart. We haven't allowed God's word to settle and to be non-negotiable and be his final authority and when we allow that to happen, that's when peace comes in. Peace with what you don't really want to do, but God says it's better that you do it. When we have peace with that, that's when life begins to get better. We're talking about a victorious life we've been talking about in discipleship class, how to walk in victory. Walking in obedience is walking in victory. Because as long as you walk in victory, then everything God says can come to pass. Praise God without any dilemma, without, without any, any hindrance. God can move quick because God said, I watch over my word to perform it. But he performs his word as we act out in obedience. Amen. Amen. He sent forth his word. Amen. And he healed him. Amen. He said his word won't return void. But it will accomplish everything it was sent forth to do. I said this year, you know, God is moving us into realignment. He's realigning our life individually. He, he's he's in, he realigning our families, husband and wives. Amen. He's realigning families, children. He's realigning uh, churches from, from the leadership to the laity. Amen. We're going to see a, 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 a this unified body of Christ, of believers who know that it's good to dwell in unity and how the, uh, the ointment just runs down the face and the beard of God. Amen. And into the skirt, into the laity. There's going to be some connectivity in any church that has connectivity in this year. And walking in divine obedience and in alignment, God is going to put his stamp of approval on it. I speak that in the atmosphere. I speak that into the churches. Amen. If everyone is lined up, God is realigning individuals. And then it starts with you. You need to realign. And then it turns into a family. And then a family is realigning. Praise God. And then, and, and then a church, as the individual and the family realigns, it come to church. We have a group of families that are realigned, and then we become the ecclesia. We become that body of Christ. We become that koinonia, and we begin to have that fellowship, right? And then when we leak off, like Ezekiel, we leak in, in, into the community, and the spirit of the living God rests upon us as individuals, rests upon us as a church. Praise God, and then it leaks into the county, and then from the, anybody, anybody interested in this, anybody interested in, in, in God's kingdom coming, praise God, right now, Heaven coming on, on, on earth right now that, that the kingdom represents a little bit of a heaven while we're down here on earth. It didn't leak into the county and into the to, to the to the to the state from the state level and, and, and to the to the countries, to the world and abroad. But it starts with a better you. So God has been ministering to us out of 
First Timothy chapter six. Paul said something to his son early on. He said, Timothy, my son. He said, be strong in grace and I always refer to the scripture because it speaks to me about three R's and one of them is a relationship. Timothy was being discipled by Apostle Paul. We all need to be discipled. Praise God. We all need to make disciples. Timothy, my son, in whom he was, he was discipled. He said, be strong in grace. So when you have that relationship with God, when you have that relationship with your, your, your disciple or who's discipling you, now you have a relationship. And now from the relationship, you move into the re resources of God. That's the grace. He said, be strong in grace. And then he says, after you understand your relationship is in line, you might say relationship in line, vertically with God, then we can begin to rely on the resources of heaven. And after you rely on the resources of heaven, we have a responsibility. And our responsibility, praise God. He said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Keep going, brother. Amen. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men. So somebody say responsibility. We have a responsibility. Amen. We have a responsibility. Who shall be able to teach others? Also, I believe that's where we got short circuited in the body. There's a, there's a short circuit. It's a ground somewhere. It's a ground somewhere between here and there. Amen. And so the church has been short circuited because uh, it, it's time that we began and rebegin to to realign and do what God told us to do and make disciples, not just believers. Jesus was talking in chapter eight of John, and he said to them that believe, indicating that he was talking to believers. But he said, there's a step more. He said unto them that believe, I think it's John 8 and 32 or something. He said to them that believe, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. Somebody said, believe and believers believe. But disciples got skin in the game. <laughs> believers believe, but disciples got skin in the game. And praise God. And you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. John 8 and 32. So I'm just thankful to God for his direction for myself and feeling very led to really deal with Timothy and deal with this progression of fleeing some things and following Christ and righteousness and godliness and, and then fighting a good fight of faith. Amen. So let's look again. Timothy chapter six. I mean, Timothy. First Timothy chapter six. We're not going to talk about the contentment because I believe content, contentment is, is de directly connected. Amen. To, to being able to flee some things. Once you're content, then it's okay for you to, to flee things. Then you, you can leave some things alone because you're content with, with the things you have. He said, be content with having something to wear and having something uh, to eat. He said, we should be content with these things. But he says, Verse 11, but you, old man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. He said he was talking contextually. We, you need to flee the, the love of money he was dealing with. We, we should run away from the desires just to, just to be have gain and have all this stuff. I mean, you got more clothes than you can use right now. I, I mean, you just got more shoes than you know what to do with right now. Just got too much stuff. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to just clear some stuff out, not, not only in, in my natural life, but in my spiritual life. Some stuff just got to go. It got to go. Some, some stinking thinking, it has to go. Amen. Some things that are directly connected to us, like a relic. A relic is something that has, 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 has attached itself to you. It has no, no, no spiritual significance. It's just attached to you. You got somebody stuck to you and it has no spiritual significance to it. You, it's not helping you get to where God is trying to take you to. We got to get rid of those things. Those are soul ties. We got soul ties. Our souls are connected to people they shouldn't be connected to. Amen. Improperly connected. There's some soul ties that need to be severed. There's some people in our lives. Amen. That not only do we not need to answer the phone anymore. 
Praise God. We definitely don't need to go visit anymore. Praise God. What are you talking about, Gas? And you're talking about unity one minute, and the next minute you're talking about disunity. No, there's there's such thing as a holy discontent. It is holy, but we need to be discontent with some stuff. Amen. And then we also need to discontinue some stuff too. Amen. Amen. So God is just speaking through me to us so that we understand that we need to flee some things. Contextually, Paul was talking to his son, disciple, his disciple in the ministry, that you need to flee some things. But he said, we talked about Sunday. We need to follow also. And we really need to, to follow the fruits of the spirit. And once we've fled the love of money, then we need to pursue something. So, so, so we talked about pursuing Jesus. We talked about pursuing a Christ life lifestyle. But what's powerful when we look at verse 14 in the same chapter, he says that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless unto our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. So sometimes you need to ask the question, you know, in all this chaos that we have going on, sometimes we've lost sight of the fact that Jesus could come back any day. No man knows the day nor the hour that he shall appear. So you have to ask yourself, what should I be doing? How should I be occupying until the Lord gets back? What if he decides, because we don't know, there's some things that need to be fulfilled still, but Jesus Christ is closer than he was when you first believed. Amen? So we need to flee these things and we need to pursue righteousness righteousness guess what we as christians we've been declared amen we, we 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 have a right standing with god because of what christ did christ who knew no sin who was righteous became sin that we may become the righteousness of god in him amen so we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus created in righteousness and true holiness somebody say amen amen so what we really need to do uh, we need to begin to follow Christ and we need to walk in the footsteps of Christ. We talked about what it's like to walk in the footsteps of Christ. We've been taught that it's just join church, wear a dress, wear a suit, amen, and shout hallelujah and everything will be all right. No, when you enlist in the army of God, that's when the trouble really starts. Because everything that you're used to doing, amen, God is almost stripping you and telling you, I don't want you to do any of that anymore. What I want you to do is begin to read my word and download my instructions for you and how to live and how to run your household and how to love your wife and how to submit to your husband and how children, how to, 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 to uh, honor your parents. Amen. It's, it's righteousness that we should be pursuing. Amen. So he said we need to follow righteousness and godliness. And we need to pursue faith. What does it look like to pursue faith? What does it look like to pursue faith? The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. The Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible says that we are saved by faith, not by works of righteousness. At least any man should boast. But it's by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. So, so what does it look like to pursue faith? If faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, then I guess if I don't hear, praise God, I guess I can't have no faith. And not only just hear anything, I got to hear the word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not, on, not only faith, but love. Man, we talk about how this, this, this scripture depicts a person fleeing something, but at the same time, vigorously attached to something else and running fleeing one thing and running vigorously towards something else. So we run running towards what's right, a right lifestyle. We run running towards love, which Jesus Christ is love. We run running towards patience. Praise God. So we're actually running to the fruits of the spirit. Let's look at John. Because we got we to get connected. We talked about pursuing Jesus Christ. Let's go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John chapter 15. Verse 1. Jesus said, I am the vine, and my father is the husband, and every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away, 
and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, Jesus said, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Somebody say stay connected. A lot of times what, what, what causes this disconnect is, is, is sin. Amen. What, what disconnects us? What short circuits our lives? Amen. What, what, what causes us, man, to seem like God is very far away when he said he's going to be there for us? What is it? it it's sin. Amen. That causes a disconnect. But see, I believe we can repent. Amen. I believe as we repent, we can recover. You repent, you recover. And when you recover, amen, you can recommit. Amen. Praise God. I, I think that's good. I think that's good. That when we repent, when we repent, the Bible says you confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive and cleanse them all unrighteousness. But understand, uh, confessing our sins and repentance, the Bible says godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of. Godly sorrow, but worldly sorrow equals death. Worldly sorrow is, I'm sorry that I got caught. Godly sorrow is, before I get caught, Praise God. Godly sorry is I've read God's word and understand this is something that is totally against his will for my life. It's time for me to stop it right now. I don't care who is hurt by it. I don't care what lie, what I've told a person that I'm going to do. And, and right now, it's not right by God's standard. So now I stop immediately. Somebody say true repentance. So as we repent, praise God, and as we repent, then, praise God, we can recover some things. We can recover, but you only want to recover what's yours in the first place. David got back from Ziglag, got to Ziglag, and he got back to Ziglag, and they realized that their wives were gone. They took everything. Praise God. And the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. You should be encouraging yourself a little bit right now. It's another year, and I don't get caught up in the New Year's resolutions and New Year's resolve. My New Year's resolve, resolve every year is I will resolve to obey God better this year. Amen. But we get caught up with David, went back to Ziglag, and they came and took everything, took their wives and everything. And, and, and he said he encouraged himself in the Lord. The Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In this time that we're living in right now, we need to be doing two things. We need to be on our knees praying, intentional prayers, and seeking the face of God and drawing near unto the Lord right now. Amen. But as, as, we, as we can recover, God told him, he asked God, should I pursue? God told him, pursue. You're going to recover all. True repentance, true recovery, and recommitment. Right now, there's some recommitments that need to be made. Amen. In marriages, there's recommitments that need to be made. Relationship, there's recommitments. In, in relationship with mothers and fathers, there, there's some recommitment. Praise God to standing in the gap for your child. They may be wayward. Praise God. Dr. Richardson was talking about, you know, people getting old and they're getting old because they ain't worried about nothing. So we don't, don't see somebody living the way we think they should be living and doing what we, so we pulling our, scratching ourselves and pulling our hair out of our head. You turned out all right. Why don't we trust God for them? Let's recommit to standing in the gap for our young people, people getting killed every day in Michigan City. Let's recommit, man, to taking our streets back by going out and standing up and declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ because nothing is going to stop sin, which causes murder and death. Nothing is going to stop it except a change of heart. And hearts are only changed by hearing the gospel message of Jesus Christ in its entirety, praise God, with love. As we minister the word of God with love, hearts are changed. Murder stop, divorce stop, children stop running away. Alcoholism and drug use, it ceases because the person now sees themselves as God has created them in his likeness. People need to see themselves like God sees them. But he says the branch cannot bear fruit except itself. He, he says, you are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So we need to understand something. As we flee those things that we need to be fleeing, we need to be abiding in Christ Jesus. No more can I accept, no more can ye accept ye abide in me. 
Watch what he says in verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do what? Nothing. Period. If you're trying to do some things without Jesus, the scripture is telling you why it's not working. If you're not connected to the vine, how do you stay connected? We stay connected through obedience. We stay connected by keeping this command without spot, blameless, unto our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Amen? Let's look at Colossians. Going somewhere. Colossians 3 and 1. If ye be being risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection. What should our affections be set on? On things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is here with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. He says, Modify therefore the members which are of the earth fornication, uncleanness, inordinance, affections, evil, conspicuous, and covetedness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. And in some time ye also walked. Sometimes when she when you lived in them, but now somebody say, but now, but now you have put off all these things, anger. This is stuff you didn't fled. You didn't fled anger. You didn't fled wrath. You didn't fled malice and blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. We not lying one another. We see that we have put off the old man with the deeds, and if we have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So 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 for God, Paul told 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 Timothy, and I, I know. That we're moving around but i'm just following god's lead right now we need to be connected we need to be connected to the vine we need to do some repenting there's some repenting of some things praise god not only things that we've done but there's some things that we've thought some way we didn't prejudge people and thought about people and looked at people the bible said don't, don't judge one another but he said make sure that you don't become a stumbling block in your brother's way and sometimes the way we're dealing with people is the very reason they ain't been delivered yet we got to flee those old ways and those old habits and the old, old you has to go. And we need to set our affections on things that are above. Amen. Amen. We got to love patience and gentleness. We, we got to fight the good fight of faith, Paul told Timothy. Of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. He says, lay hold on eternal life. Now, Timothy had already laid hands on eternal life. Timothy was working for God. Timothy was a pastor, a young pastor, a very large congregation in Ephesus. He was a very large person. He laid hands on eternal life. You and I have laid hands on eternal life, right? But God is telling him now, I want you to have a more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what God is calling for for us. You've already laid hands on eternal life. He said, lay hands on, on, on eternal life, right? So, so what he's saying, he's saying we, we got to fight for, for eternal values. Somebody say fight for eternal values. Somebody say not temporary gain. So you fighting for eternal things that are valued. The Bible says set not, you know, the Bible says that, that, that you, can, you can lay treasures in heaven. Don't lay your treasures on earth. Lay your treasure. You can send some stuff up before you. Because everybody got to give an account. There's going to be a judgment day. Amen. The Baha seat of Christ, praise God. You, 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 you're going to reach that, the, uh, the, the seat of Christ. You're not going to seek the right throne judgment. But we're going to go before God to be judged on the things. So the Bible says, don't lay treasures down here on earth with moth and rust. I don't care how much you put the car in the garage, how much wax you put on it, how much you don't drive it in the snow. It is going to get rust on it. And your clothes, praise God, you keep washing them. You can take them to the cleaners. They still going to be different. But you need to lay your treasures and things that are in heaven. Amen. Let, let's send something up before us. Let's send some immortal souls on before us. There's no greater thing you can do as a Christian, as a Christian, man, woman, boy, or girl, is that's to lead somebody else to Christ. Amen. He says that we have to fight. We got to lay hands, hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence 
of many witnesses in the in the in the in the, in the presence of many witnesses wow so we we got to have an eternal perspective somebody say eternal perspective so we living in a what temporal world but we need to have an eternal perspective we are living in a temporal world but we need to have an eternal perspective everything you look at looks different when you look at it through the eyes of eternity that car is just a clunk of steel with some rubber on it when the streets are paved in gold 12 gates to the city jaspers come on y'all we talking about heaven no more crying no more weeping let's start looking with an eternal perspective perception is everything that's why jesus told nicodemus you must be born again except a man is born again born from above he cannot have an eternal perspective but we got to have an eternal perspective while living in a temporal world this world that we live in is temporal it's fading fast amen amen help us holy spirit amen says in verse 13 he says, I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all and before Jesus Christ who witnessed, uh, who, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate. So we need to understand, he says, in the sight of God. So he's saying, listen, whatever you do, Brother Shane, it won't escape God's eyes. Whatever I'm doing, it won't escape God's eyes. This Paul talking to Timothy, man, this is this is somebody that love his, his under shepherd, the person that he's that he's mentoring and raising up and grooming him. He loving him. He said, "Don't get caught up in the money. You're a preacher of a big church. You can get caught up in the money. Don't get caught up in the money. Don't 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 do what they say. They says um, uh, gain is godliness in verse five in chapter six. No, no, he says, but godliness and contentment is great gain." Don't, don't, don't miss it. Don't get caught up in it, right? He said, I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Jesus Christ who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate. He says that you keep this commandment without spot blameless unto our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Wow. Let's look at John chapter 18. How you, how you, how you going to follow how are we going to follow Jesus? I urge you in the sight of God. John chapter 18. Verse 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered and said, Sayest thou this thing? Of thyself or did others tell you this Pilate answered and said I am a, I am a Jew thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me that have uh, what has thou done and Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world somebody said eternal perspective my kingdom is not of this world if my king was of this world then I I, I would have my servants fight we ain't understand something we, we out here winning fights but we losing the big battle we went and we went in fights and arguments. Praise God. We seem like we win it because it seemed like we won, but we really losing if we're not doing it. Jesus play. If we don't realize who we are, always trying to defend ourselves. Why are you always trying to defend yourself? Christ is your defense. My God, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered unto the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. And Pilate therefore said unto him, Are thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou said that I am a king. To this end I was born. And for this cause I came to this world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Can you hear Jesus? Can you hear him now? Let's go to John chapter 19. Following Jesus, knowing knowing your job and your responsibilities as a, as a kingdom citizen. John chapter 19, let's look at verse 14.
And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he says unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but, but Caesar. Then delivered him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him and led him away. Man, Jesus came down here to die for your sins and my sins. He didn't argue and they didn't have to take him scratching and kicking because he had knew that if it wasn't for the shedding of his blood, there would be no remission of sin. Jesus Christ gives us the ability to draw nigh unto him. The Bible says, let's go to Hebrews. Praise God, I'm, I'm going to go there. I hear you. Let's go. He gives us the ability to draw nigh unto him. Amen. Praise God. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God. Verse 19 in Hebrews 10. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holies of the holies, holiest. Man, how do we how do we have boldness? How can you have boldness, brother Shay? How can you draw near to God? Because we're fleeing sin and we're following the fruits of the spirit. We're going after righteousness. We're going after patience, right? We're going after, we're really going after Jesus. Somebody say, I'm going after Jesus. I, I'm pursuing Jesus. I, how can we have this confidence to draw near unto him? See, we've made Jesus so unapproachable. We made him sitting way in heaven and we down here on earth. And Jesus is very approachable. Matter of fact, it's the Christ in you that's the hope of glory. This he said, I never leave you, I'll never forsake. Why is it, Shay? What is it? What is it? How is it so easy for you to draw near to the Lord? How can you draw near unto him? You got to deny yourself, okay? But Jesus has made it easy for us to draw nigh unto him. Watch, verse 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holies of the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ, you and I can draw near to Jesus Christ. Watch this. By a new and living way, which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is in his flesh. When he died, the Bible says the veil was rent. Veil, man, the veil was rent by his flesh, by him dying. We were able now to go into the holies of the holies. The Bible said we don't have a high priest that don't know what we're going through. He can't touch the feelings of your infirmities, but he was tempted in every area, but yet he was without sin. So he says, I know what you're going through. I went and paved the way through earth. I first did not ascend, but I first descended, and then I ascended, so I was able to paint a way so you can get back up. It may be narrow. You may have to leave some things, and you may be on it all by yourself and alone, but I've made a way for you to get back to my Father. i made a way for you to approach me while you're down here through the Holy Spirit to allow you to know that you're not walking alone. I gave you the Holy Ghost that will get inside of you and he will lead and guide you into all truth. I, I'm God. I got this thing figured out. You don't have to keep guessing and second guessing what's going on. God said, I got it figured out. I'm sovereign. God sovereign. But God has made us available to be able to approach him and to come boldly. And he asks us to come Near, draw near unto me. That's what the Spirit is saying to us tonight. Let's draw near unto Jesus Christ. He's already made it. He, a living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is in his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. He said, let us draw near. We got access. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having your heart sprinkled from the evil conscious and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. The Bible said, therefore, being justified by faith, we got peace with God and we got access, right? We got access, but let's not forget our standing before Christ died, before the veil was rent. Praise God. In the Old Testament, the day of atonement, amen, only the priests were allowed to go in into the holies of the holies. And 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 and, our, and they had to take our sins and they had to go make atonement for our sins. Praise God! But now we could come boldly every day 
You can draw near unto God, Ismael. Every day you can call upon the name of the Lord and he will answer you and show you great and mighty works. Every day, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, delivered, healed, set free, delivered of demonic activity, delivered from soul tie, delivered from sin. Every day you can come nigh unto the Lord. Man, I, I think that's, just, that's exciting stuff to me, man. We got to go to him with a true heart, though, and full assurance of faith, have, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience in our bodies washed with a pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Y'all know he's faithful. He's faithful, y'all. He's faithful. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Man, sometimes we don't, we don't, we don't, Understand just how far God didn't brought us because it talks about where we were, but he says, but, but now in Christ, ye who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Still talking about that blood for he is our peace. Jesus is your priest who has made you both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh, the enmity. That's the war. We was beefing with God in the spirit because we had this academic nature. Even the law of commandments contained in the ordinance, ordinances for to make himself of twain one new man. So making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached to you that were afar off and to them that are not. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Somebody says, it's time to draw near. It's time to draw near. Praise God, I was reading today, and I got this book, uh, Psalms, and, and every day it's a different psalm, but on the 26th, it was dealing with Psalms chapter 15. The psalms chapter 15 is powerful. When you're talking about drawing nigh to the Lord, when you're talking about uh, uh, um, I'm just getting in the face of God this year and, and saying that you want to dwell in God's temple. Who, who has the ability to dwell in God's temple and who can't? Well, we can because what we just read. We can go boldly to the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. But he says some things that we should be following as we, as we go. And I thought it would be uh, befitting to talk about that right now. We'll end with there with Psalms chapter 15. It's only five verses. David asked the question, you know, David loved the Lord. David said, one thing I desire, one thing I hope for, and that's that I dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and I will behold the beauty of his temple. But I want to read this in, in this different version. Amen. Wow. And David said in Psalm 27 and 4, he said, I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I would desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple for he would conceal me in his shelter in the day of adversity. <laughs> God going to shield you. Amen. In, in, in the day of adversity, he will hide me under the covers of his tent. He, he will set my, set me, me high up on a rock. So David, that's his one desire. He wanted to be in the tabernacle. He wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. Jesus made it possible for you and I, to consistently and continually be in the presence of the Lord. And then he bids us to draw nigh unto him. Man, listen, man, it's, an, it's, an, it's about time, man, that all this other stuff, man, that we are engaged in, and it's taking so much of our time that it's doing absolutely zero for us. It's time for us to cut it out and begin to pursue righteousness. Time to pursue godliness. So David says, wait a minute. Who, who, who can get in? Who, who can get in? Who can get in? We can already. But watch what he says here. Powerful man reading this. And the Lord, Psalm 15, 1. Lord, who can dwell in your tent? Who can live in your holy mountain? Watch this. The one who lives blamelessly, practices righteousness, and acknowledges the truth in his heart. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there in, in the King James because you get three things out of that. This, this us right now. This 2021. Remember now, we done repented. Praise God. We done recovered some things. And now we're recommitting. So we're recommitting. And this is what we're recommitting to. Look at this in, in verse 2. He that walketh uprightly 
Somebody said, I walk got to be right. The Bible said, walk circumspectly, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We need to be walking circumspectly. Praise God. So we need to walk. The Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Here we go. We talking about fleeing again. I, I know that God has us right here. We flee in some things. Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What can only godly counseling do for those that are seeking godliness? Nothing. What can ungodly counsel do for those that are seeking godliness? Nothing. Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly. Standing in the way of sinners and sitting in the seat of scum for his delight. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. So we got to walk. Watch this. He says, he that walketh uprightly. Talking about following. We got to walk uprightly. When we walk God's word out, we walk uprightly. Watch this. And worketh righteousness. What's righteousness? How you work righteousness? They ask Jesus, you want to eat? Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of my father. This is the work of God. Jesus said, this is the work of God. This is your job. This is my job. That you believe on him who sent me. That's our job. That's not an easy job. We made that job easy because we've neglected that job. That job is easy because we've neglected to follow God's word. We've neglected, watch this, to believe on him who God sent. We think we believe him because we just raise our hands and shout hallelujah. But Satan says your actions after hallelujah indicate that you don't really believe on him who sent them because when we believe on him who sent them our actions change because we know that he has a zero tolerance clause and, and he don't accept everything we, we know that God is righteous and holy he still hates sin he still loves righteousness so if we believe on him who God sent who is Jesus we understand that Jesus is righteous Amen. Somebody say, my job is to believe on Jesus Christ. Watch this. He said, he that walketh uprightly, he that worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. Watch this. Man, it's deep right here. Now I'm listening to God today, and we were just chopping it up in the locker room. I'm sitting down taking a break. And I said, Lord, really, what, what, that, what did that really mean, though? He said, I'm speaking the truth. He, he says, it's easy for you to proclaim me openly. It's easy for you to, but, but when you speak me in your heart, that's when you have acknowledged that what I say goes, no exceptions, non-negotiable. So when you speak in it into your heart, you say, and not only is it in my head, but it's in my heart. And when it gets in my heart, it flows out of my life. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. So, so, so I, I, if I don't guard my heart, I'm allowed to get a little word in there. But a lot of garbage, a lot of isogen of a text, a lot of other man's opinion. But if I take the word at face value, this is it and it's non-negotiable. This word is objective outside of man's opinion. This word is universal. Amen. For all places. And this word is constant for all times. The word of God is for all people. At all times. In all places. And that's absolute truth. The world does not believe in absolute truth. The world believes that God says there, I made some, I'll make some amendments for some people. Yeah, yeah, we can go back to court on this. No, we ain't going back to court. It's settled. When we go to court, we go on to court. Amen. It's good, y'all. It's good. So, so you got to speak truth and speak of the truth in his heart. Not just professing it, but walking it out. Because once it get down in here, then it get down to here. Your word get in your head, but it got to get down in your heart before it get down to your feet. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The psalmist said, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You say you love him, but you're really mad at him. So when you see them, madness come out, but you said you love them. So whatever in the heart going to come out. Remember, whatever's in the well going to come out in the bucket. Whatever's in the well going to come out in the bucket. Almost done. Now watch this. He says, 
there, there are some things that are going on now. Uh, wow. He said, he that backbite is not with his tongue. So he told us what we need to follow, but we still got some more fleeing stuff in here. He that backbite is not with his tongue. Can't be backbiting y'all. Amen. Nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Somebody say flee. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not. He that putteth not out his money to usury. He said, why are you loaning folk money and putting interest on it? No, no. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Amen. This, this is good, y'all. Amen. Because Jesus is, thank God, Jesus made a way for us to get in. If, if this was a, man, thank you, Jesus, for making a way. Let me look at this in the, again. The one who lives blamelessly is righteous. Walk righteously. Practice righteousness. I mean, you're working. You work in righteousness. You practice it. Somebody say, I got to practice righteousness. And who acknowledges the truth in his heart. Verse 3 says, who does not slander, his, slander with his tongue. Don't slander nobody with your tongue. Amen. If, if you commit adultery in your mind, you can commit murder in your mind. The Bible says, if you, look, if you hate a brother without a cause, you are a murderer. And no murderer shall enter the kingdom of God. Yes, there's mental murder too. Who does not slander with his tongue? Who does not harm his friend or discredit his neighbor? They got to flee. Who despises the one rejected by the Lord, but honor those who fear the Lord, who keeps his word, whatever the cost. Are you willing to do that this year? Are you willing to keep the word, whatever the cost? Are you tired of saying, God, I'm going halfway? And every time it gets a little too difficult because we start looking at ourselves and our ability to, to fulfill it. God made the promise. He didn't want to have to fulfill it. He didn't make it for you to fulfill it. God is a jealous God. He's not going to share his glory with nobody. Who despises the one rejected by the Lord and honors those that fear the Lord, who keeps his word, whatever the cost, whatever the cost. Wow. Are you keeping the word, whatever it costs you? Friends, family, job. Man, standing up for God this year. Who does not lend silver at interest, nor take a bribe against the innocent? Take no bribe against the innocent. Amen. The one who does these things will never be shaken. It's a promise. You do that, man, is that something? That means you'll be able to stand whatever we go through because we're going to go through some stuff way through. God is going to do something, man. It's so powerful through those that say yes. I ain't going to tell you God going to do this new thing. He's going to do boy for the move and shake and rattle. And, no, God's going to do a new thing in those that have said, wait a minute, I got a new revelation. God ain't playing. He's sovereign. Whatever he say, I'm going to do it. Those people right there, God going to work in their life. When you made your mind up, I got a new revelation. God is sovereign. If God can take Joseph, who don't look like he did anything, and let him catch all that mess he caught in his life, but still raise him up to the place where he needed to be. And that's where the dream stated that he would be a rise above his, his, his parents and his, and, his, and his siblings. But at the end of the day, that's where Joseph was. God has a perfected place for you and has a plan for everybody in here and everybody listening under the sound of my voice. He has a plan for your life, but his plan includes Jesus Christ. First of all, we can't get the plan, we can't perceive the plan if Jesus Christ is not included. 
Jesus Christ is included. When Jesus Christ is included, his spirit and his indwelling spirit to line you up to be able to hear the voice of Jesus is now in you so that now you can do the assignment that God has called you to do. Let's walk this thing out. He said, if you do this stuff, you'll be unshakable. You'll be unmovable. God ain't finna just come out the sky and just boom. God waiting for some Christians that sold out on the fact that Jesus say, follow me. I'm going to turn you into some fishers of the souls of lost men. Come on, get your stuff. You know, put your poles down. Put your old self down and what you desiring and all your things that you got in your mind, what you're going to become. Put all that stuff down, your desire. Take up your cross and come on, follow me. We go and catch some souls. Once we get that revelation, we think something didn't happen with this corona. If the church would really rise up and do what we've been called to do, we, we, we'll, we'll have a real virus. Because there's a virus in the land that's been around way longer than corona and it's called sin. And everybody's been affected by it. I had corona, some of y'all didn't. But guess what? Everybody's been affected with sin. Because there's no one righteous and no not one. But there's only one cure for it. There's only one vaccine for it. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. And if we go out and preach the gospel with conviction in our heart, and we speak the truth in our heart, that's what's going to flow out of us. People who get saved in Michigan City won't never be the same again. Father, we're fleeing things. Father, we're following you, your righteous rule. You gave us permission to enter and draw near unto you through the blood. You've already consecrated, Lord God, yourself and a place for us. You sit on the right hand of the throne, ever living to make intercession for us. God, I thank you, Father God, for this night. I thank you, Lord God, that we're going to live blamelessly, Lord God. Thank you that we're going to walk in integrity in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you that we're going to have a heart-to-heart -heart on tonight and with you, a heart-to-heart. Because -heart. you already know everything we think and everything we say and everything we do. God, we just want to walk your will out for our lives. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you, Lord God, the writer of Hebrews. Bless all those that heard tonight and all those that will hear. Thank you, Father God. We are moving in your spirit. We are changing first, and then all around us will change. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God.